All right, everyone, it's uh, the return of the far left within the Democratic Party. Uh, Bernie Sanders is leading the charge. He's gotten Gillibrand on board, Booker, uh, and others. And they're now pushing two separate pieces of legislative material off on the Democrats. And uh, it's, it's a great thing. I actually, uh, I'm very happy to see this, and I'll try to explain why. They're pushing a combination of single payer and Medicare, or, or is it Medicaid for all? I think it's Medicaid for all, uh, off on the Democratic Party. Now, the Democrats right now do not have a mandate to actually do any of these things. And there is significant resistance among the neoliberals. One of the things Hillary Clinton just got done saying in her book was, oh, Sanders screwed me up by offering everyone a pony, and when I couldn't make that a main platform, uh, people wouldn't, you know, a lot of people who are on the further left wouldn't vote for me. Well, yeah, it's, that is true, technically speaking. It was more than that. It was more about you were unlikable, didn't go to your rallies, and, uh, you know, collapsed trying to get into your van on 9-11. That wasn't a good look for you, and then you didn't want to address it, and then you came out with several lame excuses in a row. That's really the reason why you lost, uh, and that was a good thing, I think, for the United States. But here's the thing. The neoliberals know better than to think that single payer is capable of being passed at this time. Um, if you wanted single payer, you would have to slash and burn a bunch of other government spending to pay for it. We tried this in Vermont. To, to, to all the Sanders, can I, can I just say something to you? Can I just put something out there? We studied it here in Vermont already. In a state that had, at the time, Democratic governor, supermajority Democrats in the House and, and Senate, overwhelming support from the population we studied that we had jonathan gruber on board you know he tried to defraud our state but he was involved in attempting to research the, the feasibility of single payer within the the state of vermont we couldn't do it it was determined the democrats abandoned it because they realized oh that's right in order to pay for this we either have to massively increase taxes our state would cease to exist by the way if we raised them enough to pay for such a program we either have to massively raise taxes or offset it by cutting so much other stuff, we're going to begin to endanger parts of our critical infrastructure. It can't be done. Now, the federal government, on the federal level, you could have single payer. You'd need to make massive deep cuts. You'd have to get rid of some bureaus, compact others, slim them all down to pay for such a gargantuan program. Let me also say this to you. You're saying to me, the government is usually inept and currently fascistic, but you want to give it control of health care at this time. You want, you want to give uh, the government control of health care when you consider it possible for the United States government to be taken over by a literal fascist. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. I'm sure it won't turn out like every other heavy-handed government program, inept, corrupt, and constantly hemorrhaging money. Uh, it won't happen this time. We'll get it right this time because Sanders says so. I don't think so. I think it's a bad idea, and I think you should reconsider whether it's really a good solution. Why don't we try to reduce the cost of health care so that people who have made even a semi-living can afford their medical coverage, don't even need insurance involved because they can pay out of pocket for it like people did 100 years ago, and it was so much cheaper and so much easier. Why don't we try that? You know, we did have a working healthcare system in this country at one point. It wasn't until the war on poverty era that we really start to screw it over and, and people start going broke because they had a, a, an impacted wisdom tooth or something. I mean, it's dumb. That's what we should be doing. But here's the thing. The neoliberals will resist. They'll plant their feet and they'll say, well, we can't do this right now. We don't have a mandate. We don't control the House. We don't control the Senate. We don't have a Democratic president. Number two, we can't afford it unless you want to cut a bunch of other stuff. And trust me, the Sanders folks, they don't want to cut anything. They just want to raise taxes. Oh, if we just raise taxes more on these millionaires and billionaires, we can pay for single payer. Not under our current tax plans. Not with our, our tax situation the way it is now. You're not going to get a penny from those big corporations. You'll just be screwing people who are independently wealthy or they made it in the world. They're not like an, a corporation. They're an investor, uh, a smaller time, you know, industrialist. They have a regional chain or something. They're going to pay through the nose. They'll all go out of business. You think the middle class has problems now? Wait till single payer if it ever passes. Under our current tax scheme, you'd have to reform the tax code significantly along the lines of what libertarians want in order to actually pay for your socialist single payer. Believe it or not, you'd actually have to do that. So the far left will continue to be alienated by the neoliberals. 
the neoliberals are the ones in charge of the Democratic Party. Tom Perez doesn't want to raise the issue. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama don't want to raise the issue. A lot of the neoliberals think it's a terrible idea because they're like, well, Obama got Obamacare and that was beloved by the left and we don't really want to tinker with it. And then Hillary Clinton offers a half-assed solution while stabbing Obama in the back. Oh, yeah, it doesn't fully work. It needs work. Uh, you know, I appreciate his effort, but, you know, my Clinton care would be better, basically. Sanders comes along and says, no, single payer, universal health care. It's free. It's free. Just like free college. Yeah, you can't do that either. Sorry. You realize how high? <laughs> you, you don't understand economics at all if you think that these would work. Other countries try this all the time. They've strangulated their own growth as economies to the point at which even with our sky high business tax rate, even we're more friendly towards people getting ahead than some of these other nations. Basically, you're born, you enter the, the grind them down socialist system, and you die in poverty, being constantly subsidized by central programs uh, in which the government basically makes all the decisions. Yeah, wonderful. Well, the, the American dream writ large. So when the neoliberals reject this, which they will, it's going to make the Democratic Party look real, real fragmented, isn't it? You've got a minor, a very outspoken and more, more uh, population friendly, honestly, minority within the Democratic Party saying we want single payer, we want college for all, we want more subsidies, we want more welfare, we want to spend, 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 spend. Sane people say, well, you can't do that. The problem is there's no sanity left in the Democratic Party. And the neoliberals are terrified of Sanders. He's the most popular person there. He's a, Sanders is the most popular Democrat, and he's not even a member of the Democratic Party. Let's put it that way. There's your problem right there. Your most popular figurehead's not even in your party. If ever there was a symbol of a schismatic movement, it was Bernie Sanders. Good on him, by the way. You're doing irreparable harm to the Democratic Party. Clinton is technically right when she says this. I just don't see that as a problem because the neoliberals are so bad. It's like, who cares? Let the Democratic Party crash and burn and try to rebuild itself. They need that pressure. The Democrats should flock to the far left right now. You should be supporting uh, Sanders over the Perez's and Clinton's. I'll tell you why. If you can put enough pressure on your party, if they like get hammered in the midterms, they lose 2020, uh, then the party will reform itself. It will change form. Uh, the left and the business Democrats will par partially take command. And things in the Democratic Party will be sane again. You'll have an alternative to the Republican populist movement. If you refuse, if you stick with the neoliberals, give them their half-assed victories, we continue to stagger along as we are now. Now, I have hope that over the next couple of cycles, at least, that reform will happen. I think it's not long in coming. I don't think it happens before the midterms. I think the midterms go awry for the Democrats, uh, much as some of their more optimistic fans may, may bicker over this point. I think they lose the midterms, essentially. Then they're under enough stress so they might start reforming. Whether they do that before the 2020 election remains to be seen. But I, I would caution you as well. If the Democrats do manage to beat Trump in 2020, it'll be because Trump had missteps, not because the Democrats had a good platform, I think. Uh, it'll be a boring neoliberal. Social stress will continue to incline on the far left because, I mean, it won't have anything in common with their policies. They'll be seen as a sellout. They'll be a one-term disaster, like, uh, you know, like Carter or something. And then uh, their asses will get kicked by some other Republican, probably younger, probably from the libertarian fringe. You might think of Rand Paul or somebody like that. That's my longer-term prediction, assuming things remain stable uh, in their course of movement. Uh, but no, you're not going to get your single payer over the next few years at the very least. I hope you never get it. To tell the truth, I hope you don't. If you do, I hope it's because some left libertarian decided, hey, oh, we'll just cut a bunch of other government bullshit. We'll cut out a bunch of uh, uh, regulations and legalese. The total cost will drop, number one, so it's easier to pay for. You could do this with a, with education, too, if you really wanted. Number two, we can always get rid of, you know, we can get rid of the surveillance state, the militarized police. We can get rid of some of this other nonsense that nobody needs. Reform the tax code, and we're all set. You know, we draw even. We may even make more of a profit, and we've got a single payer now. You could do that. It's possible, but you need to constrain other spending. Otherwise, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, you know how you paid a 20% tax rate last year, Ma and Pa? Yeah, sorry, it's 45% now. You're paying the same tax rate that millionaires used to pay. 
oh, you know, you you, uh, you independently wealthy person, you, you were paying like 40%, and now it's 65%. Sorry about that. Uncle Sam needs their due. Got to spend it somewhere. We got to have control over all the money. Yeah, this shouldn't be the way that we do business. Uh, we should be shrinking the size of government. If you want a program like that, all well and good. Uh, make cuts that are twice as large as what you're including. And deregulate. That drops the cost. Get some tort reform in there. But I don't think I want the government controlling healthcare anyway, because I'm convinced that they're too inept to manage such a thing. Look at the VA. The VA is, is fundamentally like a single-payer system for, for veterans. Look at the problems they have. Constant corruption, uh, inefficient, long waiting times, people getting legionnaires on a regular basis. Yeah, wonderful. There's your healthcare system on socialism. I think we should get government more out of health care than putting them in. Why don't you just grant a direct subsidy to veterans and dissolve the VA? Why don't you do that? Let them enter the general health care system and just give them subsidies. Wouldn't that be better? It'd be cheaper, too. Be cheaper and they'd get better care. A lot of these people, I, I doubt they want to work with the VA. The government decides what does or does not constitute you're actually sick. Oh, Gulf War syndrome? Nah, it's not a real thing. We're not going to pay for you your bullshit. Yeah, so you got exposed to a little bit of sarin. <laughs> it's okay. It was diluted at the time. No, no. Saddam Saddam had lots of WMDs, but he never deployed them in the Gulf War. Nope, nope. No nerve gas here, people. Yeah, no. You've got you've got you gained Tourette syndrome. That's perfectly normal. Just stress. Go to a therapist. We're not paying for it. By the way, we're gonna put you on a wait list for the next six months while you suffer with your symptoms. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful program. Trump, by the way, campaigned on this being a problem. His simple presence maybe makes it a little better because maybe they're uh, afraid to piss him off. But he needs to tackle that issue too. He needs to reform the VA. Or just get rid of it again. And just grant a direct subsidy to the veterans. Why don't you do that? It'd be so much easier. That's about all. Peace out.